Good afternoon, coming at Dunstanborough. I always pronounce that place wrong. As you can see, it's in the background there. The sun is rapidly setting and it's probably going to go over the horizon of the hill that's casting this light there quite shortly. So it's proving quite difficult to, to meet. I've got a hard grad on and a soft grad on and the lead big stop, that lead little stop and the polarising filter. So that's the polarising filter, the 0.9 very hard grad, the 0.6 soft grad and the Lee little stopper which is currently giving me an exposure of... I'll take the shot, so that's F16, ISO 200, a 30 second exposure. Obviously, as the sun goes down, I'm going to have to increase the length of the exposure. Quite a challenging place to photograph. A, because the sun's rapidly setting and a lot of the foreground's in shadow, which is why I've had to introduce the hard grad for the sky and a soft grad, just to keep a bit of the, a bit of extra light off the side of the mountain, of the hill and of the foreground rocks. Tide's coming in rapidly. It's due, high tide is due in one minute. So I think I'm quite safe where I am at the moment. One thing you do need in this place, you need the rocks to be wet. If they're dry, they lack any kind of contrast, any kind of definition. They just blend into each other. Whereas if you have water, on the rocks you get the glare the glisten and the lovely shiny surface you also get the sea that's coming in which really does produce a very very nice leading line if you capture the waves correctly as you can see there the waves leading you nicely into the castle some wonderful clouds on the horizon as well i'm trying to see what's on the horizon yeah, there looks to be clouds, but the sun's not due to set for, I think, another hour, or an hour and a half, so it's... So we have plenty of time to investigate the area. As I say, I've seen some absolutely wonderful shots from here. Black and white tends to be the way to go, and that's what I'll be shooting. Currently, 16 by 9, but when I get into Lightroom, the crop is overlaid on the preview, but I can convert it to any kind of aspect ratio that I feel suits the image but at the moment 16 by 9 does seem to work very well indeed. The wind's quite low so I'm not expecting the tide to come in much higher. Again these foreground rocks really do give you really do give you a nice elevated view of the sea. I could zoom in slightly and get rid of this foreground but I don't really mind it because I want to go I want to go wide. I want to go wide and I'm shooting long exposures obviously because I've got the sixth up on 30 seconds. I may take it off because I'm looking to keep the same composition but I may take some slow shutter speeds, some longer shutter speeds. So I may take some shorter exposures as well so I can blend them in post to bring out some of the detail in the crashing waves, crashing waves. I'm obviously going to do some panoramas as well and I may even have to do the odd HDR because as the sun goes further down the dynamic range is going to increase with the foreground getting into shadow. Some lovely wispy clouds above there, if they were to light up at sunset that would be very very nice indeed. One of the very few occasions where everywhere you look, the clouds are very nice. So I've got Dan to my left, he may be able to see me. I think he's taking some quite short exposures. Rich, who we arrived with, is nowhere to be seen. Rich is very disciplined. He takes very few photographs and he works the scene much better, than, much more than I do. 
camera's quite precariously perched on the edge, but it is quite safe. Again, it skews my back. Let's have a look. The short shot speed will mean there's more detail in the waves. At 30, 30, 40 seconds, essentially you've got just a flat sea with no drama. That's what I was after, so there's no mistake. And again, as I mentioned before, every seventh wave-ish, you get a quite a quite a dramatic wave that can catch you out. And it did catch me out in Ireland. If you're not wary of where you are, it looks to be another photographer. Got to fuck my camera fell over then. It looks to be another photographer over there. I'm not actually sure what's beyond that ridge. I don't think there's any water. Yeah, I think I may, I may crop in closer. There's no square crop there, what I can see. I think there is a closer 16 by nine. If I was to exclude all the foreground and focus, I know you can't see it, focus just beyond this seaweed there. Get a ni nice closer. I'm also going to try some intentional camera movement. I saw a photograph by an actor from East Enders in the barn at the Beale. Very minimal long exposure with intentional camera movement. You can just about see the castle. I believe it was Bamborough, but you can just about make out the castle. I'll have a go at that now. Anyway, for now, I'll see you. Is it exciting? No, I'm not recording. Oh, yeah, 10 minutes, not recording. I won't be able to show you the correct orientation because it was in portrait. So that's the rock I was photographing. From there and there. And as the water came in, ooh, a bit close, and as it swirled around that rock, then receded out, that's it, just there, nice sl slow-ish shutter speed, there, just catching the waves, crashing over that little rock, wait for it, and there, no, nope, didn't work, oh, that's close, just there as it goes out, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm going to end it there. Because all of the side is supposed to be going out, it seems to be coming in. So, for now, I'll see you. Oh, oh God, things are starting to fall apart. <laughs>